in this video tutorial I'm going to cover the variable speed conveyor that we talked about in class. We're going to jump right in and create a new model and I'm going to call it variable conveyor speed. The purpose of this model is to show how we can actually use state charts on a conveyor um, where the conveyor can either be in operational state or in a failed broken down state. But while it's in operational mode, it can actually take on different states. It can either be stationary or in a, um, a state that we're going to call acceleration, or it can be running at full speed, or if people have not accessed it for or approached it for a certain period of time, it will start decelerating until it uh, actually stops again. So that's the logic that we actually want to to build in. Uh, before we add the process blocks, I'm going to start with the state chart itself. I'm going to my palette called state charts, and I will just add an initial state which I will call ST operational. And I use the prefix ST for all my different states that I'm going to add. I'm just going to move it here to the top and I'm going to give it enough space and you'll probably see a bit later why because I'll add all the internal states as well. Any state chart, to actually give it a name and say this is my state chart, I need to have a global entry point. I'm going to drag that just to the top and I'm going to call this ST conveyor. So this will be the state chart that talks about and refers to my conveyor. The arrow with a black bar at the top says globally when I start the model this will be the 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 state in which the state chart will actually find itself. So initially we assume that the state of our conveyor will be operational. Inside the operational state we're going to add a number of different states. We're going to say, all right, first and foremost, it would be possible to have a state called stationary, meaning it's st just standing still. We can also have a state that says ST acceler accelerating. We can have another state to indicate it's running. And the last internal state that we're going to use is decelerating. All right, <clears throat> before we start uh, connecting all of these states, let's just add a broken down state. It may be valuable at this point to add a few variables and parameters. I'm going to add a variable to tell me what the conveyor speed is. I'm also going to add a parameter with prefix PAR to indicate what the maximum conveyor speed is allowed to be. And this will influence uh, up to what point do I accelerate, uh, at what speed I'm actually running, um, but the, the uh, and that will be a set parameter. The variable conveyor speed will indicate what is the current speed at which the conveyor is running, or at which I want the conveyor to actually run. At this point, I'm just going to add the variable. I'll refer to it again a little bit later. I'm going to add a variable called approaching conveyor, which is kind of a utility variable that I will call and use to just indicate whether anybody is actually on their way to the conveyor. And this will kind of be the sensor that the conveyor looks at for guidance to actually say, all right, are there any people coming? 
Is it long enough? Can I actually start decelerating? If my conveyor is operational, it can actually break down. If I go back to my state chart, I'm going to add a transition from the operational state to my broken down state. The transition, I use a prefix TR and I'm going to call the transition breakdown. In this particular case, I want the transition to occur at a specific um, rate and the rate is 1 divided by 10, sorry not 10 seconds, 10 minutes. So it will be follow an exponential distribution with a lambda parameter, um, kind of a, a mean time to failure of, of 10 minutes. That will be the rate. I actually want to show the names of my transitions so that I know what I'm referring to. And when it enters this state called broken down, on the entry action I actually wanted to set the variable conveyor speed to zero. So I start typing control space and I wanted to set the conveyor speed to zero. The initial value we can actually set to zero as well. The maximum conveyor speed I'm just going to set to 10 units and initially there won't be anybody approaching the conveyor. Initially that variable should also be zero. Right. For sake of simplicity I'm just going to add a transition back to uh, the operational state. So from a broken down state that will be a timeout to actually say every 10 seconds. That is roughly how long the breakdown actually take. And after 10 seconds it will move from a broken down state back into an operational state. So although we haven't connected any of the internal states, at least we know how to move between operational and breakdown. Now let's start adding the state transitions inside. Just get my spacing. I want the model to, by default, every time that it actually gets to the operational state, I want it to be initially in the stationary state. And to ensure that, I will indicate that explicitly by adding an initial state pointer to the stationary state. Next, I want a transition between my stationary state and the state accelerating. And how will it actually know when to move from stationary to accelerating? There's a particular condition that I want to actually check. And that will be that if anybody is approaching, so if my variable approaching conveyor is greater than zero, if anybody is approaching and I do find myself in a stationary state, then I should move to state acceleration. Next, I need to accelerate until I get to the correct speed and after I get to the correct speed and I'll address the how do I get to uh, the correct speed just now, um, just now I want the transition to actually then move me to a state called running kind of running at full speed Just add the names so we can see. And they're going to call that transition starting. And this transition I'm going to call stop. Stop accelerating. And it too should check for a condition that actually says if the variable 
conveyor speed is greater than or equal to and it should typically only be equal to the parameter max speed so it'll keep on accelerating until the variables conveyor speed exceeds or is equal to the maximum running speed and then my conveyor is up and running at some point I actually want it to start decelerating and for this purposes I'm going to introduce one variable and one parameter the parameter is going to be called timer and the variable is also going to be called timer but they've got different prefixes variable has got a VAR prefix and parameter has got a PAR prefix the default value of the parameter timer is set to 30 meaning at this point that if the conveyor runs for 30 seconds without seeing anybody approaching it should start decelerating that's the intent that's what I'm after so this parameter just specifies that threshold the variable timer is the the timer which has an initial value of 0 and I will later on work with this timer value to actually say right but how long have you actually um, been seeing nobody approaching the conveyor back to the state chart I want to add a transition from running to decelerating I'm going to call that transition start decelerating and it too will run or be triggered by a condition and the condition is that if my timer value the, the variable if that is greater than or equal to the parameter timer then it should move from state running to state decelerating show the name and then my conveyor should be decelerating until such time that it actually gets to a zero speed call that transition stopping and it should move from decelerating to stationary whenever my variable conveyor speed is zero so that is the condition it will check the double equation means it will evaluate that as a, an expression that should either return true or false a boolean or a binary uh, value and that gives us the internal states just going to clean up right that looks a bit neater